I did that? Yeah. I did that. That was me. That was me. Let's try take two. Okay, so we're back again, as I was saying, back here at AB Vegas for the weekly live chat. Ah, when they watch this later, I'll edit that out. We'll fix it in post, right? We'll fix it in post. You got to learn what that means uh, to say fix it in post in order to make it uh, as a magician on TV and the internet now. Fix it in post. Fix it in post. Uh, so, um, but as I was saying, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, last week, we were uh, at the satellite location, but now we are back here at AV Vegas. Need to give a big shout out to AV Vegas. They've always hooked me up, helped me out, letting me uh, come and run my little uh, goofball nonsensical weekly live chat show right here. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you haven't already, uh, I was just about to ask right when you guys told me in the chat that, uh, yes, Adam, goddamn Carol Baskin. Um, that I was going to ask you guys to please go ahead and uh, in the, if you're watching on Facebook especially, hit the heart and the thumbs up so that you guys can uh, let me know that you can hear me okay, you can see me okay, all is good, hopefully. So, uh, yeah. So I guess we've figured that out, that you guys already know uh, what's going on and that you can see me and hear me know. Uh, if you guys haven't already as well, please do me a favor and uh, like if you haven't already and share this stream across your social media platforms on your uh, Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, your Snapchat. Hopefully not your TikTok though, because if you're on TikTok, you better run now because, uh, oof. Oh dear, oh dear. TikTok going down. Going down, and thank, thank, thank God, honestly. I never really understood TikTok, but we're going to talk about TikTok a little bit further later in the show when we talk about one particular TikTok video that is, uh, as far as I've seen, especially going viral. Very interesting. We're going to be talking about that. All sorts of fun stuff. All sorts of fun stuff. Let me bring up my list. I didn't have it printed out. We're going paperless now. Right, so... Um, yeah, so like, if you guys don't know, if you're tuning in for the first time, this is where I talk about all things strange and unusual. I show some new magic. I teach you guys some magic. I uh, show and, 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 and share with you old school magic from days past. Usually they're dead guys, but their magic lives on. Uh, Eater, I have a piece of hair in, in my mouth. John Lumley, yes, TikTok is as bad as Alexa. That's right. You hear that, Alexa? Um, and, uh, and all sorts of fun stuff coming up later, uh, later on in the, in the show, in the program, in the program. That's how I have to say it now because uh, I'm getting older, so I have to pronounce things like an old person in the program. Uh, but if you guys are watching, I see we got some people from Germany. Bridget, Bridget from Germany. Dagmar's in the chat from Germany. Uh, lots of exciting stuff about Germany coming up. I tease it and talk about it every week, but more uh, contracts have been signed for my return to Germany in 2021 as part of the Distorted Sorcery Tour, my new show, my new tour that I've put together and written and have been working on, getting it ready to bring to you guys over in Germany, as well as then here to the United States of America. America. So get excited, get excited, get excited. The Strange and Unusual show. I also have a virtual show I'm working on. So if you haven't done so yet, uh, a different virtual show. Some of you guys might have already seen the virtual show that, uh, that you perhaps maybe hired me to do. I don't know. But uh, this is a, a virtual show for the public that we're working on. It's going to be called Virtually Impossible. Yeah, you heard it here first, folks. Virtually Impossible. So stand by for Jesus on, uh, on more information about Virtually Impossible. Uh, really exciting stuff. We were actually talking about it uh, right before we went live. Oh, what's up, Cindy? Coming in from New York. Kyle McIntosh from Canada. Lisa Poldlowski. I can't really say your name. I never could say your name. But you're from Canada. Oh, Joanna. I see you in the chat. Really big fan. I just reposted uh, a picture. She's great, great magic supporter. Great fan. And I think it, uh, it was uh, the wristband that you had uh, posted. I, I, I shared the photo that you posted of the Abercabastard wristband, which if you want one, you can get yours from dansperrystore.com. You can get t-shirts, all sorts of fun, cool stuff from the Abracabastard Freak Boutique right there. Jeff, Jeff Weeks in from Twitch. Well, thanks, man. Thanks, uh, thanks for tuning in uh, from Twitch. But yeah, really cool stuff coming uh, to the store very soon. Things like uh, earrings, I'll just say it. I teased it a little bit last week. Earrings, I was hoping to have them here today. They still might arrive today. I just haven't gotten notification that, uh, that they've arrived. Uh, uh, yeah, earrings and, uh, and, and a mystery box. There's a really cool mystery box I've been working on that, uh, that's going to be available very soon. So get excited. Um, 
Sorry, a little tired today. We made it, though. We're a little tired today because we were up late last night. Speaking of Twitch, we were up laced, la laced, laced. Nothing was laced last night. We were up late last night playing uh, my little side project that I do with my buddies called the Anti-Gaming Gaming Show. I'm not sure if you guys have ever tuned in, but we do it Mondays and Wednesdays as of right now. So if you're not doing anything tomorrow, and let's be honest, we know you're not, you should tune in at 6 p.m. Pacific time to twitch.tv slash anti-gaming gaming show. It's, uh, it's a live streaming uh, game show that we do. And, uh, you know, maybe I should just show you guys instead of trying to explain it. We have a new quick little video. What the hell is it called? Ag's video. I'm looking for it. Where the hell is it? Do I have to scroll up? I'm looking in my sources. Oh, Jesus. All right. Here it is. All right. Watch this. It's really quick. You'll enjoy it. Are you tired of the same old boring Twitch streams? Tired of endlessly scrolling to fulfill your desire for content worthy of your face balls? Well, my friend, welcome to the Anti-Gaming Gaming Show, Twitch's most outrageous four-man interactive live game show. Ever wished you could stop stream sniping and ruin your streamer's game in a new way? The Anti-Gaming Gaming Show has just the thing for you. Submit challenges to the squad live, in the heat of battle, in order to squash their chances of winning. The Anti-Gaming Gaming Show is like crack for your eyeballs. Except it's not crack. Tune in to the Anti-Gaming Gaming Show to join in on all the fun and chaos. Visit www.antigaminggamingshow.com for more information. So that's what the Anti-Gaming Gaming Show is. Gives you an idea. I see in the chat people asking some questions. Jason Mora, is it kid-friendly? No, no, God, no, no, it's not. It's not kid-friendly at all. But we try. We're, we're, we're trying to pull it back because we know there's a lot of gamers uh, that are young kids that would probably want to tune in and, and love watching this. We're trying to work on, uh, on it because it's basically, it's a, it's a very unscripted type, uh, you know, interactive live gaming show. And it's a bunch of us just, you know, goofing around, acting like idiots as we, uh, as we play this game. And then you guys, right, have to try to submit these challenges so that we don't uh, win the game. It is a lot of fun. It's, 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 it's the best, in my opinion, not just because uh, we created it, but it is the best uh, live streaming show on Twitch, probably on the internet. If you love gaming, if you love gaming, uh, watching gaming shows like that, check it out. Uh, and, uh, and furthermore, uh, that's basically what we've been doing because now Vegas is back to phase one. Hopefully where all of you guys are tuning in from and everything. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Everybody is good and staying safe and healthy regardless of what you believe is going on with this coronavirus thing. Sometimes, whether you agree with it or not, we just got to play along with the rules just so we can all get back to normal soon. So whatever you got to do, you know, hide your kids, hide your wives, wear a mask, whatever, plug a dick, I don't know. Whatever you got to do. Um, in the past week, though, a lot's been going on as well. Uh, I need to give a quick shout out to all of you guys that jumped on the post I made about my dad. It was my dad's birthday. Even though I don't believe in birthdays, the response from you guys jumping in the comments and things like that. He actually saw it and, uh, and he, was, he, was very, uh, he was very appreciative of it, as was I. So you guys that saw it, that jumped in and made comments, thank you for doing that. Very, very cool of you. Much appreciated. But... There's a lot of things we talk about in this, uh, in this program, in this show, and one of them is obviously magic, because since that's what I do, or used to do, now I just talk about weird shit on the internet. But um, uh, yeah, one of the things I do is, uh, as I said in the beginning, loving to promote magic of the past and sort of sharing that sort of stuff with you guys so you can get an idea and, and a taste for what magic used to look like. And most of the time, I feature dead guys, right? But we're not featuring dead guys today. This guy's still alive. He's a living legend. His name is Shimada. Shimada is one of the few living legends in magic that's still alive. The dude is amazing, super talented. I have no idea how old he is right now, but he's definitely getting up there, but he's still around. He's still kicking it, and, and he still does shows. Maybe not to the same degree that he did before, but uh, Donna, yes, one of the most overproduced game streams on the internet. Uh, Tim Wise in the chat. What's up, Tim? Uh, and uh, so Tim knows. He knows ta what I'm talking here about Shimada. Tim gets it. Shimada, dude, living legend, really amazing guy. I brought with uh, a clip of an act that he is 
really legendary for one of the guys that really uh, I had shown um, some videos of other past uh, you, you know magicians like I said Cardini was a guy like, like I had said when I showed Cardini a guy that really influential influential in, in influential on influenza uh, influence influential Jesus Christ spit it out uh, influential on magic and manipulation Shimada is the same thing uh, especially with when it comes to dove magic he was the guy that really uh, I had showed Shan uh, Shanning, Shan ooh, Shanning Tatum, Sham and Lamb and Ding Dong, Sham Wow, get it out. Um, I showed Shanning Pollock uh, a few weeks ago as well. Uh, Shimada, and I talked about the, uh, the movie European Nights that Shanning Pollock was in. Shimada actually, as a, uh, as a young man, went and saw that movie European Nights. He was into magic, and, and that's where he got interested in, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this aspect of magic that's, do that's, that's dove magic. This mic pack makes it look like I have, like, diabetes or something. It's just, it, it makes it look like I'm carrying more than the quarantine 15 that I've already put on. Uh, what was I talking about? Shimada. Shimada, that's right. Shimada, hardly know her. So I brought with a clip of Shimada for you guys to uh, check out in our segment called... Okay, right. So I said Shimada, right? So Shimada uh, getting the clip brought up here. This is this clip is about ten years old. So now, like I said, the dude is, and I'm not trying to say this out of disrespect. The dude's super old already, right? But this clip, it, it was up. I found it like ten years ago. It's the most recent clip that I could find of him doing this legendary dub act that he does. This is already ten years ago, and the guy has still got it. it blows my mind. Watch this. Here's Shimada. Get excited. This is the legend guy right here. I think this was filmed in Greece. I'm not sure. But this guy not messing around. I think this was recorded on a potato, but pardon the pixelation. But smooth. I mean, smooth. Dude still got it. Like I said, dude still got it. Like smooth, like look at that. Come on now. Come on now. I like the little sparkle ring perch. Here you go. Here you go. You sit up there. You be good boy. You be good boy. Okay, you go now. And I will say this too, I'm you know, I'm I'm, I'm talking up Shimada here as we're watching this, right? I'm I'm talking up Shimada and, and well deserved and all that, but um, that's, his, uh, that's his current wife that's helping him. He, his, his wife before, Deanna, uh, I met her and knew her. Uh, unfortunately, she did pass away, but I got to give a shout out. Jeff, I don't know what a steal is. There's muggles around here. Watch your mouth or I'm going to have to smack it off your face. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, any uh, time a magician works like this, it's not just um, necessarily just about what, what, what he's doing. Uh, the animals, like the doves involved, man, he, this dude, he's put in the work, obviously, you know, um, using, uh, 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 using the, the birds and, and the assistant, they deserve a shout out just as much. Deanna, his, uh, his, his, his ex-wife, uh, as well as, I, I've, I've met this current wife, like, once briefly, she seemed nice enough, uh, so I don't know what else to say, because you can't say anything. <laughs> no, no, Jeff, it's fine, it's fine, just talk like Penn and Teller if we're gonna be pulling that. Um, but uh, but yeah, big, big shout out uh, to the uh, the assistants. I mean, like uh, when I when I showed uh, the clip of Channing Pollock, you know, he used an assistant like this as well. And oh my God, there's a dove out of nowhere on the cane in your face, man! Just nailed it. And he's probably like 800 years old, 10 years ago when this was when this was filmed. The dude's gonna live longer than the Bush family, but he he doesn't need adrenochrome. This is just all natural. But yeah, I mean, 
badass. I, I usually cut the the videos. Uh, I usually cut the video short at some point, but I think we should just watch this all the way through because this is this dude's a master, a legend, and uh, and totally deserves it. What's up, Johnny Thunders? Hello from Canada. What's up, dude? What part of Canada? Diana Marie in the chat. Diana the Destroyer. If uh, if you guys uh, watch, I mentioned the Anti Gaming Gaming Show earlier. If you guys uh, have ever tuned in to watch it, or if you ever do, you know Diana Marie is lethal. She's lethal in the show. You know, just pulling some playing cards out of the dove's butt, like you do. You know, dove just pooped the pan of cards out. That's obviously not what the trick's supposed to be, but sure as shit is what it looked like. You know, it's hard for magicians sometimes, you know, we get these ideas in our heads, right? We get these ideas that we come up with and, uh, and we, uh, and, and, and it sounds good in our head, you know, like, oh, I'm going to just have the bird and then I'm going to produce a fan of cards and blah, blah, blah. Right. And then you do it and then you have people, you know, people like me that, uh, that watch it and go, yeah, it looks like the card just came out of the dove's butt, but they didn't, you know, that's not what it's, it's meant to look like, but you know, that's just where my 12 year old brain goes. This is a great illusion. A little diminishing cards, it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller and then they go away. Doug's in the chat. Oh, Johnny Thunders from Ontario. All right. Oh God, Jesus, this Diet Mountain Dew. I mix Diet Mountain Dew and Squirt because it's hot as balls in Vegas right now. Hotter than two rats fucking in a wool sock. That's for sure. So it's hot, so. No, I had coffee this morning, but no coffee during the live show today. So I got uh, I got some Diet Mountain Dew, and I got some uh, little little splash of Squirt, which is amazing. If you guys have never had Squirt, delicious grapefruit type soda, a lot of sugar. Which again, remember I came back from the dentist, and I don't have and I don't have uh, any cavities, but somehow I'm drinking this garbage, you know. Jeff Jensen, I agree. Uh, routining is the hard part, but the fun part. It is, it is, you know, uh, it, and it can take years. And this guy, I mean, Shemite, he's probably when this was filmed, that was 10 years ago, let's say, so. I mean, he, I mean, over, over 40 years he's been doing this act, you know, for sure, you know. That, that's right, Dakota, I am from the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That Was that the giveaway? Oh, what a waste of a shot. Just finish it, dude. It's not like there was ice in it. You either go all the way or you're in the way. All right, got a little bird here again. Yeah. Turns into a cane. Good. Yeah. We need more perches. Produce more canes. Oh, Dakota, you're from Missouri. You're from misery. Nice. I'm sure it's humid, like, like beyond humid down there at this point. All right. Sorry, Shimada, you know what? It, that's enough. That's enough. Even even it, it, 10 years old, I said I'd let it run. I can't anymore. We're, we're burning daylight over here. We got a lot to talk about. So that's Shimada. Uh, big shout out to Shimada. Like I said, dude is a legend. He's amazing. Uh, definitely look him up and, and see other videos. He's got other amazing acts. Really uh, talented manipulator. Uh, like I said, dude is a legend. Um, so now that we're you know talking about magic, we got we to gotta do some, some adjusting here. Because uh, since this is about magic, this is usually where I premiere some sort of new magic. But, uh, but I forgot it. But I forgot it. So instead, we're just going to roll with it. And we're just going to we're, we're gonna do a, uh, like an unplugged uh, uh, random thing with, uh, with new magic. So get excited. New magic tricks you're going to see right now. Right, yes, Cody, uh, better tasting than Sprite. You're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. That's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, I did, Lori, I'm talking on Talk to Text, and I apologize. I had to have my tooth pulled, but I haven't done it yet. So it's insane. I have a broken tooth still. Oh, my God. Ouch. Jesus. Get that fixed. Put some uh, Aura Gel on there or something. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I'm not a dentist, so I have no idea. Uh, yeah, Cody Squirt is good. Yeah. Oh yeah, geez, I bet. I, I mean, I did. I did an art festival twice in um, Colum Colum Columbia, Columbia, Missouri. Uh, I did an art festival down there twice, 
And it was always, this time of year in July, it was awful. One of the times, it was when there was the cicada, like, infestation, right? Where the cicadas, like, come back to life or something. And then they just make all that noise. And, but they had cicada ice cream, but it was sold out. I can't imagine how it sold out because there were so many goddamn cicadas everywhere. Uh, so, all right, uh, this is where, uh, like I said, New Magic is where usually I premiere something I'm working on or I dig out something that I haven't done in a long time and forgot it. I forgot it at home. I forgot my homework. So we're just going to pull something out of my ass with this deck of cards right here and, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll just uh, pray that I don't fuck it up, right? So, all right, we adjusted the webcam. Oh, God, it's a little cockeyed, a little cockeyed. Let's fix that. Fix that. Okay, so you can see we got a lot going on back here. Uh, so this uses... Oh, great. That's not a good sign. Um, this uses uh, the, uh, uh, the Dan Sperry Inventorum deck of cards right here that you can see that you can get from DanSperryStore.com. You saw the ad earlier. Uh, we need four cards for this one. We need four cards. This uses... Actually, this uses the four aces. This uses the four aces, uh, which I don't have. So we're going to go with the four kings instead. Let's try the four kings. Not a full deck of cards. Nobody cares. Don't tell me I don't even... Okay. All right. So there's those two and these two. All right. Good. All right. That's a very unsanitary card storage choice. Well, Kyle, who cares? I'll wear, I'll wear my mask. I'll wear my mask. Uh, the cicadas are... Yeah, they are crazy there. If the rapture happens, it's starting in Missouri. It's, uh, yeah, no, no shit, right? Definitely. Oh, Josh, 107 in Texas. Uh, it's, I mean, Florida's pretty muggy. I bet, Cody. Yeah, dude. Seriously, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Florida is in, insanely muggy. Uh, so let me see. Hopefully you guys can see this a little bit. I'll do it down here. Uh, in the, I'll do it in what we do in the shadows here. So I got uh, the King of Clubs, the King of Hearts, the King of Spades, and the King of Diamonds. Like I said, usually this goes with the four aces, but instead uh, we're going to use these four kings. Now, you see there's a lot of different ways, right? There's a lot of different ways to turn cards over. And I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna sham, sham, I'm gonna explain. Jesus, I'm gonna explain how to do it with these cards. You can turn it over horizontally, like end to, uh, side to side, right? Like you're turning the pages of a book, right? Uh, you can also do it end to end, the long way, like this, like flipping them end to end, like I just did, right? Uh, you can uh, also just give a, a twist and a turn. And out of the four cards, you'll see one. The King of Clubs actually turns face up. Now, that was a quarter turn, so that's one. If I do a full 180, whoa, King's getting dizzy. The King of Clubs turns over. Wait, no, they all turn over. Except if I snap, the King of Clubs stays face up. He comes back up. How the hell did I fuck that up? It's been about 20 years. Let's try that again. <laughs> Christ. Uh, all right, so the four, uh, the four kings, right? The four kings. You can turn it over horizontal. You can turn it over end to end like that. So it doesn't matter. You can also give it a twist. And if it, this was an idea in my head. All right, King of Hearts turned over that time. Ooh, schmancy. Go uh, in, in 360 degrees. They all, how am I fucking this up? I don't remember how to do twisting the aces. Well, one turned over. Suck a dick. Who cares? Um, this, this deck of cards is, is, is garbage. It's garbage. I'm going to blame the deck. I'm going to blame the deck. How am I blanking on this right now? It's probably because I didn't get enough sleep. This is going to bother me. Granted, I haven't done this in, uh, in a minute. So What's up? This, this came in special for you, and I, I promised the person I would give it to you live on the show. So I don't think it's Anthrax, but I've I crossed out my address in his so you can't see it. Oh, okay. Well, I it's, it's from Kyle. Mack oh, okay. Yeah, it's from Canada. I was going to say this is from Canada. So this is from Kyle. This is from Kyle. It, where are you in the chat? Hang on, Kyle. You're still in the chat, right? Sound off. Oh, I see him. I see him. I see him. Um. Hang on. Let me put this up here. So this is this is uh, from uh, Kyle McDush. You can find him on uh, inst Instagram at uh, at what was it? D Diesel Illusions and something else. I can't remember the other one. Oh, nice. It's a deck. Um, what are the? Oh, this. Wait, hang on. This is his deck? Yeah, that's Kyle's deck. Oh, shit. Hang on a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, dude. Wait a sec. Did you make. Uh... Oh, shit. Oh, wow. All right. 
Yo, okay. Uh, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Uh, if you guys, um, uh, if, if you guys remember, a few weeks ago, I showed uh, this thing that Kyle does. Um, Kyle McIntosh in the chat that he does, um, where he he does art with with decks of cards, and he used one of my decks for it. And uh, can I take this out, uh, Kyle? Sound off in the in the comments. Serious? Wow, dude! Fucking thank you. This is fucking awesome. I don't. Well, hang on. I don't. I don't want to take it out. This is fucking rad. Thank you, Kyle. This is really amazing. Uh, it takes him like uh, eight to twelve hours to do this. He said. Um, fuck. I know there's a bit of a delay, so sorry about that. But uh, I should just fucking type it, really. Um, uh, but by the time I type it, he'll see it. Hang on. Um, geez, I'm fucking, I'm going to do it anyways, but I'm going to, I'm going to hold it very careful because I don't want the, I don't want the plastic to reflect too bad shit, man. Now don't open the, t I see it now. Don't open the tuck. This is rad. All right. So if you guys, uh, remember when I showed this, it's hard to, to really get a good angle. This is fucking ridiculous ridiculous look at this he takes each card carves it out so it's 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 all back in the fucking box right like look at this fuck i was fucking blown away when uh you did this with the with my deck for uh online but this is fucking nuts dude look at this like, sound off in the chat. You can see the depth. Look at that. Sound off in the chat. Everybody give it up for fucking Kyle McIntosh. Mr. McIntosh. Jesus. Look at all that. Even cut out, like, a little uh, little magic no longer sucks thing uh, on the top. But are these, are these, are these in, uh, are these in new deck order when, uh, when you put them back in? Not like it fucking matters, but... Fucking nuts. Thank you. Fuck. Thank you, Kyle. That's the same deck. One of a kind, never to be cut again. Shit, dude. Fuck, man. Great fucking work. And thank you, man. Thank you. This is insane. Love it. Thanks, dude. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. Uh, can, can we get... Uh, uh, let's do something. This is, so this is, this is your deck, Kyle, right? Um, and, uh, no, it's not a board. Like I said, who, who cares really? It's still, it's fucking art and it's fucking awesome. It, 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 when I, when I talked about it, like I said, up to, up to 12 hours a deck, fucking nuts, man. Fucking nuts, man. Thank you so much. Uh, but where, if, uh, this, can I open your deck? This is, this is your deck that you designed. Is it Kyle? You designed this deck? Perhaps maybe I should just do it in the, in the, in the thing, he did, okay, yeah, and, uh, and can I open this, Kyle, can I open this and, 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 and show off these cards too, and is, uh, put in the chat where, uh, people can find this deck as well, so everybody can, uh, can give Kyle some, uh, can give Kyle some support, give him some love for, uh, for, uh, for all the time he puts in, because he does this with other decks too, I've seen him do it with other decks of cards, and that's when I saw, we, he do it with, with one of mine, and, uh, Blow, fucking blown away. He said, go for it. Okay, so we're going to go for it. Um, so, Kyle, and then throw, like I said, throw in, in the chat here real quick where people can get this deck. And if, um, and any, anything else particular. Okay, so this is a, a deck put out through Murphy's. So, uh, I like, it looks like, um, this makes me think of the hoverboard. I know it's a, it's a, it's a Jap sorry, you can't really see. Um, there was a hoverboard that kind of had this pattern on it, I remember, from Back to the Future Part 2. Um, but, uh, but what's the, uh, give us a quick story. Ooh, this is a nice finish. Ooh, hello. Um, this is, this is a really nice deck. It's called, uh, Hin, Hin, Hinodi, Hinodi, Hinodi. I don't know what this, I don't know what this means. There's the Ace of Spades, the Ace of Spades, Hinodi. Um, wow, really nice, uh, finish on these two, man. I like the off red. Really nice quality. Who made these? Steinbach, Manitoba, made in the USA. Wow, nice, man. Really great. Did this start as a Kickstarter 
or what's the what's the story on these, Kyle? It means sunrise in Japanese. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> no Cody, Japan war or something. No Cody, no. Kick uh, no day. I don't. I'm not even gonna try to speak Japanese with how I fucking talk. Um, but great, like it was this. Um, what, what's this? What's this mountain? It's a it's an old volcano, I think. Right, this is uh, Mount Fuji, I think, isn't it? Uh, on there, really great stuff. So, uh, any magic dealer, uh, any any magic website, if you guys collect cards or whatever, probably even if they're put out through Murphy's as the wholesaler, basically and any any gambling probably or any card uh, um, distributor will have these. Uh, you okay? United States uh, uh, playing card. Crushed premium finish, real nice finish, released straight to, to retail, right? So check these out. Kyle McIntosh, the amazing card cutter, also put out, oops, put out these, uh, this deck, the, uh, the Sunrise deck, the Hinodi, Hinodi, Hinodi deck. Uh, so check them out, look them up online if you're into cards and stuff. Give, uh, give these a search and, a, and a toss them in your basket. Toss them in your basket, Carol Basket. But thanks again, dude. This is really, this is fucking nuts. Fucking insane. Thank you, man. And one of a kind. Jesus. Fucking nuts. Thank you, dude. Nuts. I don't know what else to say, man. You fucking talented motherfuckers. You're all talented. Really great. Um, wow, that just got weird. Uh, shit. So, uh, in, other, in other stuff to talk about. I don't know what else. Uh, uh, oh, well, um... Now we're gonna get into. I lost my spot in the thing. We're gonna we're gonna get into some some of the weird the weird side. This is where we're gonna get into the weird side of the show. That's why it's also uh, called the strange unusual show, right? Because we start talking about strange unusual stuff. And obviously, those of you that have been watching, or those of you that have known me for a long time, for years and years and years, I've been into conspiracy theories, things strange and unusual, and that sort of thing. So, I find it. Uh, uh, you know, something that I like to talk about, and, and I know many of you in the chat watching this that tune in and watch the show, you guys are as well, which is why I like to just throw out ideas and thoughts and things like that. And I am sure you guys, like many people, have now been following not just this Ghislaine Maxwell thing, but the Wayfair stuff, right? Like you guys have probably been seeing the, these posts about the cabinets on Wayfair. And I don't think that it's a coincidence that uh, they arrested Ghislaine Maxwell and then went on to now this Wayfair stuff is coming out. I'm not saying it's connected, but I think it's, 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 it's the snowball is going down the, uh, going down the mountain. If you guys don't know, what the Wayfair thing is, we got an image of it right here that I'm going to bring up. It's basically these listings, right? If you have a, a, a look at these listings here, uh, you can see that they're basically, they're basically uh, uh, selling these storage sheds, right? But they want crazy prices for them. And the names of what these models are, are called are the names of missing children, right? So, so there's weird stuff uh, 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 that's, that's being connected. The dots are being connected. There's weird stuff going on here. Now, some people were saying like, oh, they're selling kids. They're selling missing children and shipping them in these, in these, uh, in these cabinets. I don't believe that they're actually shipping children in the cabinets. I, I, I do believe though that they are, that this was being used for, for a, a, a sort of human trafficking and very icky type stuff. And, uh, and it's definitely, I think it's all connected and I, it's definitely coming out. And I, I don't want to tell people that called bullshit and called me a weirdo. I told you so, but it's starting to look like some, I told you so type stuff, right? Like I don't, like I'm saying, I don't think, and I'm not saying the children were in the cabinets, but I believe it was a way for them to sort of auction or sell them. Uh, I, I totally believe it. Yeah, yeah I, people in the chat, Cody, Rinny, yes, it's, it's true. It's a, it's a thing. And the, the head dude, was it the CEO or something of Wayfair, resigned when all that stuff came out? They called it an error or something. But like, how do you have that many errors? How do you have that big of a, uh, of a, of a, of a mess up in the online listing? How do you not sit there and say, why the hell aren't we selling if it was, let's just say, let's just say, if it was not a something to uh, to to use as a front for like human trafficking of uh, of children or people, 
how um uh, uh, how do you, uh, let's say if they're, if they're saying it wasn't and it was a mistake, how do you have these listings and, and not look at your reports or whatever and say, how come we're not selling these cabinets? Oh, that's right. They're too expensive. Wait, all of them are too expensive? You know, like how do you screw up a, 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 a decimal point that many times on those types of things? And I don't want to say anything that's going to get me in trouble or get, you know, my, my Facebook or things like that, uh, in trouble. But I mean, this, um, uh, Jordan, they order the kids and launder the money by buying the cabinets with the coin. Right. Yes, yes, exactly. Right. That's what I'm saying. Uh, it's, it's a front for them to sell. If you guys uh, don't know Jordan, uh, I follow a page that he has on Facebook. I think that's, is that the one you put in there? Um, right, the odds, exactly, Cody, the odds of the name and overpriced, it doesn't, it just doesn't add up, it's something weird's going on, and if you look into it, there, I, I, like, I don't want to uh, draw a direct line, but I'm, because I'm still reading into these things and looking it up, but, there, you know, stuff, Ellen's connected to it, and obviously there's so many missing celebrities right now, there's these videos of celebrities looking like, like, you know, you see celebrities out of makeup, right, like, all like the the paparazzi photos, but now you see celebrities really looking like shit. Like they need their adrenochrome because they're basically melting. Like they look awful, right? And they're acting weird. And like th this stuff, I'm telling you, I believe that this stuff is real. Call me crazy. Call me a weirdo. But I, I, I when, when, si what's the quote? When science and, and convention leave us uh, no answers, then uh, what was that quote? When science and and convention leave us no answers, then why not look to the fantastic as a possibility? You know, yes, Ava, Ellen, the, well, I wouldn't call her a comedian. I'd call her obnoxious. But yeah, I mean, if you want to call her a comedian, sure. I mean, people call me a magician, right? <laughs> but um, she's tied up in it, I believe, as well, because she had like pillows. I think she had pillows, like the, the Ellen pillow or something. I got to look it back up because uh, I don't want to say the wrong information, but it was something like that. Uh, Cody, that documentary on Epstein really brings light to the messed up situations. Oh, absolutely. If you have also, if you haven't uh, tuned into or watched a guy uh, named Jamie Deluxe, J-A-M-I-E-D-L-U-X, he's on YouTube. I've been watching him for years. He's who I really watched when I started getting into this, like the, the Schmitza Schmate thing with, uh, with the Podestas and all those people tied up together. It's, it's just an icky, icky bunch. And, um, and even, you know, like I was saying, this weird stuff about celebrities. I'm not even sure if you guys have seen the new Howie Mandel TikTok video. I talked about TikTok earlier. This new TikTok video is weird. And, of course, you can look at it and say, oh, people are reading too far into it. They're, they're, they're looking for things that aren't there. But, again, there's, there's still a lot of coincidences in this, in this weird TikTok uh, video, this, this, um, this clip that we have. Uh, I brought, I, I, it was on YouTube. You can look it up on uh, YouTube and you can, you can find it. But here's the clip. Let's watch this Howie Mandel clip. Uh, and, uh, and, then, and then we can talk about it. So watch this. It's, it's really weird. It, and, and, and okay, I'll, I have some other things, but watch it first. Then we'll, we'll, we'll watch it. We can always watch it again. But check this out. Hi, everybody. Howie Mandel here. Creativity in just under a minute. Just take a regular shopping bag. And all you and so need like is they're a saying, pencil right, he has, and a uh, pair of He scissors. does seem a little nervous and, and shopping on. bag. I've never watched anything Howie Mandel's ever done. Off that side So he's talking and that about side. Like craft time. And you just take the, the, the pencil. And on the front, I write shoe. I don't know if you can see it. Stuff. Then, I don't Can you see it? It says shoe stuff. Shoe stuff. Then you created a bag where you could put all your shoe stuff, and it's easy to reach into. Like you go, oh, where's my extra laces, or where's uh, some stuff for my shoes? That's what that is? Keep, keep joining in, brother. So, my question is now that. We've let it play. My question is, like I had mentioned, I've never watched anything that Howie Mandel's like ever done. You know, so like, is that is that, I, I mean, I get it. He has like the OCD thing and, and all that. I mean, of all people, I fucking get it. But like, I mean, like, is that how 
is that part of his, his bit? Is that part of his character when he does like his stand up? Does he act like that? Because that seems weird, you know, and um, and 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 he just and, and the, the 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 video doesn't make sense. You know, like if, if I if I hadn't have said, you know, oh, there's some weird stuff going on with Howie Mandel and you would have watched it. Does does the does the video? I mean, it's it's craft time. He's got a paper bag. He cuts the corners off and then write shoe stuff on it and then you can pull your shoelaces out and then it and then it and then it just goes nowhere that okay so kyle that's kind of his style his old acts were very adhd um I, well lisa p i remember i remember watching bobby's world uh a few times and i never really got into it honestly i never thought it was that good of a, of a show and even as a kid i found i found bobby's voice obnoxious but um, but okay, so maybe so maybe that is maybe maybe it maybe it's nothing maybe it's nothing I don't know because like I said it, you know there are those things that were put in and they were you know sort of gone over in the video, um, you know the 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 held here the SOS lifeguard sweater with Santa Monica um, <laughs> Jason Mora I think he's cracking he needs people the 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 guy. Um, the, the, the guy who has uh, OCD and doesn't like people touching him, he needs people. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe this is the, the cure for, uh, for his uh, ADD, uh, or his OCD, sorry, not his ADD, his OCD. Um, but maybe, maybe, I don't know. But I found that, that, weird, that, that, that video to be very weird. I didn't get it, and, and maybe, that's the whole, maybe that's the whole thing. James Clark, time to put his ass in the nursing home. We're talking about Holly Mandel here, not Joe Biden. Um, uh, he always stuttered and rambled with no real punchlines. Very strange character. Okay, because uh, th this video literally, like, what, came out like a day or two ago, and I've been following it and watching it. And, uh, and so that, but that was the first thing that popped in my head, though, when I watched it. I was like, well, maybe this is just how he presents himself, because I've honestly, like I said, never watched any, uh, any Howie Mandel stuff. Uh, but again, Cody, like you just said, maybe he is in trouble by the higher power. Like, maybe it is the cabal or all these people, you know, um, Right, Jordan. Yeah, I know lots of these celebrities are breaking down without their adrenochrome. Yes, they are. They look like shit. They should try drinking Mountain Dew and Squirt and black coffee. I mean, look at me. Look at me. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I don't need any adrenochrome. I probably can't even say that word because uh, it's probably going to get us in trouble. Um, but uh, no, it's my uh, topic. But how pissed was Howie at you, Jeff Weeks? That's actually a good question because it, it goes into this whole Howie Mandel thing in that uh, you, you might have seen the post. It was actually 10 years ago this summer that I did AGT. Remember that haircut and that jacket and that shirt? Woof. Bye. Uh, but uh, that was 10 years ago. Crazy, right? Really crazy. He actually, he wasn't, uh, he, he was, he was kind of mad at first because he didn't know about it. It was just like me, a few producers and the director that knew what was going to happen. Um, but, uh, okay, Kyle, it does remind me of his old stage character, but it comes off as creepy. It does feel very off. Right. Um, Ava, I wonder if there's conspiracy theories about Dan being a vampire that hides blood in his coffee. I'm going to have to ask you to stop talking about that. Um, anyways. <clears throat> And uh, Lisa, who would hold Howie hostage? Well, the theory is, is that a lot of these celebrities are on house arrest right now because they are involved and connected to a lot of this icky stuff that, uh, that has, uh, has been going on and coming to light. And so that's, uh, that's him uh, sort of trying to give a signal because he can't talk about it. And uh, if, if your life gets cut, then you know the NWO is watching. Yep, yep. Right, Alexa? Oh, yeah, you're right. right, right, right. Um, but, but it was actually 10 years ago. I did, I did AGT. How we, uh, he was kind of mad at first, but we've, like, whenever I've run into him, when I've come back as a guest on AGT or anything like that, he's always been, like, super cool when I've run into him since. And, you know, it always, you know, gave me his, uh, his knuckles thing and, and would, you know, sit and chat for, for a bit. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and that, that was it. He was, he was always fine. I think he got it. You know, in the end, I think he got it. I think he knew it was all for TV. But uh, if you guys remember, though, that was the year Jackie Evan. Uh, no, she didn't. Uh, Jackie Evancho or Vanco. I don't remember how to pronounce her name. Um, she came in off YouTube when I did, and she didn't win, but she got second. And she's gone on to have a, a you know a really good career and stuff. But she was, I think, she was about eight when she came on the show. And this is this is a, an AGT story that I like to share 
because um, people like still to this day, it was even though it was 10 years ago, people still will ask me this stuff today. Like, what's the story from AGT? How was it? Well, there's this one story that I always share, and it's about Jackie Ivancho or about Jackie Ivanko or whatever. Um, and, and what it is, is we were, we were backstage. She was like eight years old. Her mom was there and her little brother was there and they were talking and there was a guy that was another act that had a dog. He did a, 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 an act with his dog, right? And so we're all, you know, sitting in this holding area. The guy has the dog and as, you know, since they're little kids, I think her brother was maybe like five or six and then Jackie was like eight or nine. Of course, they're little kids. They want to go and, and, and play with and pet the dog, right? Of course they do. So they go to pet the dog and they're petting the dog and the little brother, I shouldn't laugh because this isn't funny, but I mean, it is and it's fucking dark, especially when you see Jackie Ivanko like being like, you know, this little angel with the voice that sings and oh, isn't she lovely? But so she's there with the dog and her brother and the little brother goes, oh, we used to have a dog like this, but we had to send him to go live on a farm. Uh, right? Like people actually use that excuse. And so I'm sitting there listening to this. And then her, so her little brother says this. Then Jackie goes and says, he didn't go to a farm. He's dead. And the face, the, like the face on her little brother was like, what? No, he's not. He went to live on a farm. And Jackie goes, no, mom and dad just told you that. So you wouldn't be sad, but he's dead. And I was like, holy shit. This, this, this little chick is got full on Meryl Streep shit happening right now. Like full metal Meryl Streep. And wow, like I was blown away that what an evil, mean thing. And that poor little brother too, because the whole, the whole, the whole situation was all about her sister, right? Or his sister, right? So like she's, you know, the, the focus of attention. She's, you know, getting her big break, being the big star going on AGT. You'd think that Jackie wouldn't have a reason to do that. If anything, it would be the opposite. The brother, you'd think, would want to say that to try and get back at Jackie because of jealousy or whatever. But she, she literally blew the, the doors off the story that their dog was fucking dead. And that, I, so number one, that. Number two, that the parents even used the story that the dog lives on a farm woof oh no i mean whoa don't i can't say woof that's rude that, that that's not good but you know like who does that good parenting life lesson um so a lot of weird stuff anyways going on with celebrities which now brings us to our other topic that we do every week the this week and ufo sightings that's why is the aggs on the ufo Okay, so this week in UFO uh, sightings... Oh, Jordan, now, d d let's not go too deep. I want to go really deep. Google who owns a good portion of Water Island, 10 miles from FCC, complete with submarine base. The Biden brothers, yeah, not surprised. Not surprised. Do they, do they have parties with the Podestas over there too? Um, but uh, so this week in UFO sightings, this is something, uh, a topic that's fascinated me and I've been interested in for a long time, so I like to share it, along with other strange and unusual things. And... We got people from Canada. This week in UFO sighting actually comes from Canada. This happened in Canada and worth checking out, right? So um, this isn't a video. I don't have a video of it. But uh, just recently, a UFO was spotted over Canada. A disc, not an orb this week. Get excited. We don't have U uh, UFO di uh, orbs this week. We have discs. So, and the fact that this was seen in Canada, this, I already think it's real. I don't have video, but I have a picture of it. It was uh, uh, outside Ottawa, um, near the, uh, the Yao International Airport, the Ottawa International Airport. It was spotted near there. A guy was taking pictures of planes as they were coming and going, etc. And he snagged this picture. One moment it was there, the next moment it was gone. They checked the lens, they checked the camera, nothing wrong with the camera. This is the picture. I know, of course, it's grainy. You'd think it's 2020, we'd have our shit together. But this guy, I don't know if he was shooting it on, a, on an old Kodak, uh, you know, crank and, and, and let it uh, get printed, disposable type camera or something. But this is what he saw. He took the photo 
And uh, it was only in uh, one of a series of photos, right? Uh, like I said, the camera lens was checked. There was no issue with the camera, nothing like that. It, okay, yeah, see, it almost, it almost looks like a car, but you can see there is a bit of a, like a dome to the top of it, right? You can see like a curve, kind of, kind of uh, comes to a, a, not a, not an exact point, but a peak. It, I mean, it looks, it looks like a saucer. It looks like an upside down saucer, really, right? And uh, the, you know, the other thing is we don't know how far away it is. There's not a lot of foreground background stuff to try to get an idea of how big it is. But like I said, this was taken in Canada outside Ottawa at the International Airport. So since it was taken in Canada, they default, it's real because they're so nice. You guys are so nice up there. You know, Johnny, you know, was it you, Johnny? I know you're in Ottawa, you said, right? Ottawa, hardly know it. You were there, right? You're, you're, that was you. Was this your picture? Johnny, did you take this? Johnny, Johnny, Johnny in the chat. Johnny, Earth to Johnny, because obviously you're up with the aliens and you took that picture, I bet, didn't you? It looks like a wee little cloud. I don't think so. Uh, where is that? That's, it looks like a wee little cloud. Really? You think so? I don't know. I don't think that's a cloud. It could look like that because of digital zoom instead of optical zoom. Oh, that would explain why it looks grainy. It looks like a Bob Ross painting. Yeah, it does. It does look like a Bob Ross painting. Needs some trees. It needs some happy trees. It needs a lot of happy trees. Jonathan Bryce in the chat. Jonathan Bryce um, knows Diesel Illusion. Kyle McIntosh. Jonathan, did you see that I got a present? Fellow Minnesotan. Uh, you know, oh, okay. Unsigned Metal 2020. You have a friend biking across Canada. Well, tell them to zoom with the digital zoom instead of the optical zoom when they see Bigfoot or UFOs. Harry Potter car, Rennie, right? Is it, either that or it's Elon Musk's car falling back out of, uh, out of space, you know. But Bryce, check this out. I got the, I got the original, the original, the one and only. Pretty badass. Um, right. Uh, what are we talking about? Right, the UFO. So I think, I really, really at this point, I think it's real. I'm just happy it's not a fucking orb again. Not an orb. So thank God. Um, also, in, in good news, we're just going to keep going because we're, we're, we're pushing an hour here. Uh, we, got, we, got, we got distracted by Shimada. Um, but uh, uh, the, the good news this week, I, I got uh, distracted and pulled away from doing Anticonjurer story time. I am doing uh, the video. It is edited. It's about to get published right after this on my YouTube. I'm doing Damn It, Carl and Other Halloween Treats by Matthew St. Sire. This was uh, submitted by uh, her boy, uh, her, <laughs> his girlfriend, Kat Swanson, Kate Swanson, I think, too, is, is her real name. Uh, another fan uh, sent this in. Her, this is, uh, uh, her boyfriend wrote this, and the illustrations are really fun. They're really great. It's a bunch of just very kind of dark and twisted type uh, poetry, and the, uh, you can see the, the illustrations are really fun and uh, really great. They're really great little stories. I'll read you one really quick. If candy corn was sent, sentient, I don't know how to pronounce that, so we're not going to read that one. I read a couple, uh, I read a couple clips, uh, clips. I read a couple... Uh, Pages uh, out of it. What's one? I read that one already. I read that one. Okay, Pumpkin Spice not Nightmares. I'll read you guys Pumpkin Spice Nightmares right now. The Harvest Lord is unhappy, sitting on his hallowed throne. The world is filled with turmoil, but the kind you've known. The, scare, the sacred pumpkin has been defiled. Its rightful place usurped. I don't know that word either. I went to art school. I know what a, I know what a 2-8 uh, pencil is, though. Its powerful magic has been replaced by a coffee being slurped. All Hallows' Eve no longer enchanted. Its spirits commercialized. When the veil between worlds grows thin, only candies and costumes are prized. The Harvest Lord is scheming, calling on the powers of night. For these humans must pay dearly to set the natural order right. They'll eat and they'll drink to fill their heart's content, consuming all they see, fulfilling his dark intent. Now when the sun is set and the autumn moon is bright, those who have disrespected will glow with unholy light. Their eyes will burst and melt away, their nose fall off as well as their hair, supernatural fire burning bright inside, a horrible pumpkin spice nightmare. You hear that, white ladies? Watch out, because this could be you with all your pumpkin spice lattes. And all, you know, I'm just kidding. It's not just white ladies. It's pretty much white dudes too. All that pumpkin spice nonsense. Disgusting. Not into pumpkin spice. That's why when, uh, when Zombie Java was still up and running before all this nonsense, I never let out a pumpkin spice flavored coffee because it's basically sacrilegious in the coffee world. Um, 
But this is, uh, that's a couple clips. A lot of uh, other good, uh, fun Halloween poetry in this book. It's called Damn It, Carl, and Other Halloween Treats. Look it up. Really great. Fun stuff. Where are we at now? We're almost done. Right, teach a trick time. Let's keep this moving. This is another part that everybody likes. It's teach a trick. Okay, so teacher trick time. This is where I give back and teach you guys how to do an easy magic trick that you can do with things that you probably have around the house. This one uses some envelopes and some playing cards. Uh, you gotta have the four aces, but I remember I do not have the four aces, so we're gonna use the four kings and the joker. So you need five envelopes, right? You need five, uh, you need a, a, a four of a kind and then uh, a, an indifferent card. So I'm gonna use a joker, right? The, and the four kings, okay? So what you do, you get those five cards and five envelopes. I'm not gonna seal them. You usually seal them. So you have each card placed inside of an envelope. These are also the, um, the, the, the what's it called? The security envelope. So if you hold it up to the light, you can't see through it, right? So that's important. So you put the card in the envelope. Usually you seal it. So one king, put the other king inside, right? seal it, whatever, uh, then, you, so you do it with all four kings, all the kings are going inside the envelopes, sealed, blah 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 right, put them inside, then you get the indifferent one, the joker, so this is sort of like a, uh, a Russian roulette type, uh, type trick, right, and then it's sealed, you mix them up, once they're sealed, you have them all mixed up, and the object is to, without holding it up to the light or anything, have to try and guess and figure out which envelope has the joker in it. And you can do this as like a bar bet or something. You have to find which envelope has the joker. And if you get one of the four kings, you're wrong and you lose. So as they're mixed up, I honestly, I'm not marking them or anything like that. This is like legit. So you go through once they're sealed, that's important as well. You seal them so uh, there's no way you could peek or anything like that. So once they're uh, all mixed up, that's how you uh, find out which one has the uh, joker in it. That's important because that's the money one. And after my magical uh, uh, x-ray vision, with my magical x-ray vision, I'm going to gaze upon uh, these envelopes now that they have been mixed up and try to guess. You can number them even too. Maybe I should have done that. Look at me. Look at me brainstorming and making new magic. So I'm going to gaze at them with my x-ray vision to try to guess which one, I have it, I know exactly which one now, has the Joker. I'm going to open it and reveal I have found it. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. So the way this works is, uh, is really easy. When you put the cards in the envelope, you have the, uh, the, the four of a kind. When you put them in the envelopes before you seal them, you put them in like, like uh, horizontally, right? So all four of the kings are going in the envelope horizontal like this, right? And then it gets sealed and whatever, right? You can number them, like I said. When you put the card that has the joker in it, the one you're supposed to find, you don't put it in the envelope horizontal. You give it a half turn so it's vertical and you tuck it in the corner so it gets kind of wedged in there and it stays up and down, seal it, whatever. Then when they're all mixed up, and like I said, you have them numbered, you can have them mixed up, you put them in whatever order you want as you're mixing them up and take them back and, and, and fan them out and spread them out like I did, you're just feeling the envelopes to feel for the envelope that has the joker on uh, uh, upright, vertical, in the corner. So that's it, and if, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're frostbitten, or you're an amputee, this won't work. So I'm sorry. But for the rest of you, great, great little magic trick. Like I said, a bar bet that you can do. Fun little thing. You can share it with your family, your friends. And especially in these times, uh, one of the, 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 the challenges and like the messages that I've been trying to get across by doing these teacher trick videos is that maybe try using these. I know some of them are corny and stupid, but it's all for fun. And try using these to, uh, to share with somebody, especially now if you're, if you're on lockdown or if you're part of a, a, a job industry that has to stay 
uh, on lockdown or if you're like us here in the entertainment industry where the faith of our career is, is still just as scary as that flight log for Epstein's airplane, uh, this is something to take and try to just share it with somebody to make them smile, give them, give them something to, 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 to laugh at and enjoy, a little bit of mystery, a little bit of wonder. And these are, you know, magicians are never supposed to reveal their tricks. The ones that I do here are just really supposed to be super easy and for fun. And I don't mind, like, in, if you guys see me doing this, I'm teaching it to you guys. If you guys want to teach this to somebody, a, a, a niece, a nephew, grandkids, brother, sister, grandparents, whatever, perfect stranger, throw it up on your social media even just to try and brighten someone's day. So give it a go and have fun with it. That's the, uh, that's the teach it trick time. So we're, we're about getting to the end here. I know it's been a marathon, but we're doing pretty good. I've only gone over five minutes this time instead of 30, but I, we're not done yet. So we'll see how this goes. But right now we're going to jump to another section, the homework section that we always do when I give you guys something cool to, to watch and, uh, and hopefully you'll enjoy, or maybe something to watch that'll make you think or something like that. This has been a perpetual homework, but we're going to end it now and start with a new one. So here we are with this week's homework. So the homework from uh, before that has been carrying over for weeks and weeks and weeks is Captain Ron. I'm not sure if you guys even uh, remembered uh, us talking about it. Not even sure if you guys even watched it or if you did watch it, if you even remember the movie. But we were kind of going through over the past few weeks this sort of uh, 80s sort of thing. We did Ghostbusters. We did Adventures in Babysitting. You know, this sort of 80s going into the 90s transition, you know, and uh, and um, it's uh, it's it's Captain Ron. Now, okay, keep it, keep it, keep it together in the chat there. Keep it together. Uh, before I have to separate you guys, let's not let's not get crazy. We're talking about Captain Ron here. Great movie. It's got Kurt Russell. It's got Martin Short. We got a bunch of Canadians. Got a bunch of Canadians in the in the chat in the stream today. Uh, so uh, Martin Short, great comedian actor, funny guy. He was great in this movie. I love Martin Short in Captain Ron. Uh, I know it's 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 old. It's weeks old at this point. So uh, hopefully you guys checked it out. Really funny and and just great. Great family movie, and they, they have pirates, and they have pirates of the Caribbean in it. So, got to watch it if there's pirates, right? So, that was the homework to watch, but like I said, it was, it's, it's a bit old uh, at this point, so we won't, we won't carry on talking about it. Let's focus on the homework, this week's homework. The homework for next week is this movie. We're going to jump on the other end of the spectrum instead of, uh, you know, 90s, uh, early 90s, hoo-hoo comedies or whatever. This is a really great movie that I actually stumbled across as I was flipping through Amazon when I was trying to find something to watch. I had seen it and I forgot about it. I watched it again. Great movie. Got a great cast. The homework for this week. This is the movie to watch. Seven Psychopaths. If you guys have not seen Seven Psychopaths, definitely give it a watch. It's got Colin Farrell. It's got Christopher, uh, Christopher Walken. It's got, uh, who's that guy that played George Bush? Uh, oh, it's got Tom Waits in it. I forgot. It's got Tom Waits and his little rabbit, Sam Rockwell. That's who I was trying to uh, say. Sam Rockwell, really great. And, and this got me thinking uh, because I had also watched Jojo Rabbit, which has Sam Rockwell in it. But Seven Psychopaths is the, uh, is the, the, the homework video to be watching for this week. And we actually even have the, uh, the trailer for it. Trailer, hardly an hour. So uh, I'm going to show you guys if you, if you are unfamiliar with Seven Psychopaths uh, and haven't watched it. Here's the trailer. Check it out. It's really great. Seven Psychopaths. I mentioned Tom Waits with a rabbit. There's also Hi, a small shit Oh, my God. Oh, I have to pay you. Thank you so are you, are you much. Are you serious? <laughs> and how's everything in the dark kidding up on business? Did you get a new dog? Why were you walking him, Cherise? I always loved Bonnie like he was my own child. One, I do not want that image in my head. Two, could you go get my dog back? Hey, what the hell happened? Some punks jumped us. Who are you? Said they were looking for a little shih tzu. Then some other punk killed those punks. It's their blood. It's his puke. 
You, you want to go to the bathroom? Clean some of the blood and the puke off you? <sighs> I almost got killed today because you kidnapped the wrong dog. Are you being serious? Wow. What are we going to do? We could take on all the bad guys, maybe in the desert. And what do you think we should do in real life? <laughs> How you doing? What's your name? Shut up. We'll get you back to your daddy in a day or two. Don't be sad. Pa. Pa. No, Pa. That's OK, too. I got to pull myself together, I know. But my dog's going to end up killed. You're not pulling yourself together, are you? <laughs> You've got to give it back. Give it back? You don't just give back a kidnapped dog. It beats the entire object of the kidnapping. Put your hands up. No, but I've got a gun. I don't care. It doesn't make any sense. Too bad. I'm going to work. Are you pissed at me for something, baby? Why would I be pissed at you, Manny? Because you're a killing. You waiting for somebody, old guy? Uh, no. OK, you seem normal. Come on in. We gotta get this dog off the street because it's kidnapped from a maniac. Dandy. I like it. It's got layers. Yeah. An eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. No, it doesn't. There'll be one guy left with one eye. How's the last blind guy gonna take out the eye of the last guy left? So that's seven psychopaths. That's, uh, that's the homework for next week. Yes, uh, Jonathan Bryce in the chat. Never seen it. You got to watch it. Really well written. It's, it's one of those movies that, uh, that just unfolds into pure chaos. So that's the homework for next week. Uh, yeah, I mean, guys, everybody. Def yeah, Brittany Carter, definitely need to watch it. It's really great. And uh, that's it. That's the homework. This is where we have now come to the end of this week's live chat i want to thank you guys for tuning in i want to thank you guys as always for tuning in because we have just shared what has been called your most valuable possession and that is your time because it's something that when given away you can never get it back again so thank you for spending a little bit of your time with me this afternoon hopefully i didn't waste it enjoy seven psychopath <laughs> i thought tom waits was not alive no he's alive and don't forget this movie is not exactly uh current but as always uh thank you guys again Thank you to Diesel Illusions, to Kyle McIntosh for sending this deck. Kyle, we didn't get to the, the creepy story. We'll do it next week. Um, but thank you guys uh, uh, for tuning in for real. There's always, as usual, I end the show with uh, some strange, unusual music or bet. Kyle, like I said, the MK Ultra story, we've gone over. I'm going to do it for... Uh, I'm going to do it for next week. We're going to do it next week, the MK Ultra story. Uh, so we're going to save that for next week because we went uh, a little too long already. So uh, we're going to end, as always, where I share with you guys some sort of weird, strange, and unusual music, uh, band, group, artist, music video. If you guys have been watching me or knowing me for a long time, you know that uh, I've been a fan of and, uh, and into mindless self-indulgence for as long as I can remember. I've used them in my shows, and this music uh, track is one I use in my bird act, sort of bringing it full circle after watching Shimada. And uh, I use it in my bird act, but it's also a really fun music video, one that a good friend of ours at the Dan Sperry uh, group, uh, a good friend of ours had involvement in, a guy named Gary Tunnicliffe, who has done a lot of work with us and, and, and advisories and things like that, designing and building. And he's also done a lot of amazing work for the movie and uh, horror industry, etc. He did some work on this music video when they, uh, when they uh, were putting it together and when they filmed it. So thanks again for tuning in this week, you guys. I'm going to leave you with some mindless self-indulgence and shut me up. <laughs>